Chapter 6 Landing Grand The Hansen must have been damaged when coming into contact with the hijacker's base jabber. When the captain announced a change in location for their landing, the cabin was noisy. But as the strange vibrations continued, the noise died down, and a gloomy air of unease permeated the cabin. We've contacted Davao. We will land at their airport in 20 minutes. After countless broadcasts, the captain had finally revealed the landing point. Well, well, if it isn't our future base. Kenneth's words to Hathaway Noah were again filled with the camaraderie of a shared job well done. Why here? It's farther away than Hong Kong? Yeah, something is wrong with the Hansen's tail fin. Kenneth checked the belt of his life jacket while murmuring to Hathaway. We can only go forward and are drifting to the right? That's right. Attempting a wink, Kenneth then closed his eyes, pressing his head up against the back of his seat. Noah, my boy. One of the cabinet ministers across the aisle was reaching out, poking Hathaway with his elbow. Yes? It was Mr. McGovern, the Minister of Culture and Education Promotion. You piloted a mobile suit during Char's rebellion, didn't you? Is the Hansen okay? The minister's wife, sitting on his other side, was also looking at Hathaway with a worried expression. She did not recognize her husband's great leap in logic. I don't know anything about flying machines right now, especially spaceships, but we chose Davao, so it should be okay. Oh, I guess you're right. I'm also praying to God. Ah, I see. Just as the captain had said, the Hansen was heading for the giant new landing strip west of Davao. Bright shouts and cheers rose up from the cabin. Well, things are easier for me because we don't have to be on the move anymore. Kenneth grinned over at Hathaway, removing his life jacket. This airport? It was this big? Hathaway tried to look out the window at the airport, but Kenneth spread his arms over the window hiding it. Actually, this isn't something I can show to civilians. But you're also using it for civilian flights, right? Yes, we are. Unfortunately, it doesn't just belong to the Federation forces. Kenneth laughed. Besides, you can see all you want after we get off the Hounsen. The Hounsen had started to head for the airport apron. Kenneth stood up and entered the cockpit. Still, now that we've landed in a place like this, what are we going to do next for transportation? Wasn't this an inconvenient location? Disgruntled complaints rose up from among the ministers. It was as if they'd forgotten the nervousness from moments before. No, no, this airport is closer to Adelaide. Gentlemen, let's take the time to enjoy the beautiful tropical air. A flight to Adelaide will be prepared for you immediately. The Minister of Interior Space Inspection in the front row spoke out with an optimistic address, earning applause from the other ministers. It was like he had already forgotten of his comrade's death. Although they knew this was brought on by the relief from the threat of the hijackers, it was not a pretty scene for the onlooking civilians. How could you... Hathaway was stirred up, but he kept his mouth shut and stared out at the passing tropical scenery. The Hansen stopped on the apron in front of the airport's control tower. A short while later, a passenger walkway connected to the airlock. The Mindanao Island of Davao was originally an island with airport access. The Earth Federation forces had appropriated the facilities and was using at it as an Air Force garrison base in the South Pacific region. Hathaway moved to the lounge to check on the tied-up prisoners. Wow, Noah, my boy, that was a nice bit of action there. The bruise on the purser's cheek was getting darker and darker. It wasn't nice at all. The aftertaste of violence is bitter. The wounds to the hijackers are pretty bad, right? They won't die, and a doctor should be coming soon. Hathaway loosened the prisoners' gags in fear that they were biting their tongues. But the trio appeared to be fine. They still had life in them. They didn't seem to be soldiers, but their eyes shone with the confidence of purposeful action. Is your body okay? asked Hathaway, seeing Mace Flower standing next to the hatch with her clothes unchanged. Yeah, somehow... Despite saying this, when Mace tried to reach her arms up to fix her hair, she crouched over in pain. It seemed her injury was bothering her. The purser went over to help Mace. Noticing the ministers coming down, he adjusted his collar and waited. Well, well, Hathaway Noah. Thanks to you, we've been able to land at a friendly base. Thank you. The ministers and their wives went up to Hathaway one after another, repeating derivatives of the same sentence. A breath of warm, slightly salty air floated off towards the lounge. To the five senses accustomed to airtight spaces, 
That foreign air was quite refreshing. This was especially so to Hathaway, who had gotten used to such air over the years. Breathing deeply in secret, he waved sociably at the ministers and the other guests as they left the ship. Last among the passengers was Gigi and Alusia. Their gazes met. Or rather, she stopped and waited until it happened. Gigi gave a laugh, looking over with her clear blue eyes. What? asked Hathaway. But the voice wouldn't leave from his throat. In that second of hesitation, Gigi slipped past and out over the walkway into the dense, tropical island air. My new subordinates are coming. Sorry. Kenneth finally entered the lounge alongside the captain. Well, it seems that nothing is amiss, said Hathaway, looking over the prisoners. Yeah, it seems it's just like Gigi said. These guys aren't mafty. You mean they're frauds? Hathaway pretended not to know. His circumstances made it that way. Well, we won't know until we look them up. As a possibility, they might be fragments of the Mafti army gathering at Own Belly. Mafti army? That news alone was a first to Hathaway. Although he was used to life on the southern islands, it wasn't as if he knew everything that was going on. I don't know the details myself. Owen Belly? It's a town in northern Australia. Seems there are several thousands of dissidents gathered there. Sir, Commander Kimberly is currently leading troops towards Owen Belly. What? An officer had cut between Hathaway and Kenneth for his report. Just finishing his dash, he stood there gasping for air. Sir, Lieutenant J.G. Ray Lagoid of the Kimberly Force's 5th Landing Squad. Ah, I'm Kenneth. I've just been appointed here. Waiting for Kenneth to return a casual salute, Hathaway asked, Um, can I get off? Wait for me in the lobby. We need to get a statement from you, and we have to make arrangements for a hotel tonight, too. Are these the new forces you'll be in charge of, Captain? Mafty hunting is our job. I'm not gonna let the police complain. The Hansen's operating company, Panspace, landed here, so it's in our jurisdiction. Really? We've no choice, right? Said Kenneth clearly. He took a sullen look at the protesting captain. Captain, what is it you want us to do? Oh, Lieutenant, good work. Take the hijackers calling themselves Mafti into custody. We're going to get them before police or the guys from the investigation department. Yes, sir. Hathaway put their conversation behind him and waved over at Mace, who was sitting in last row of lounge seating. He then headed off of the walkway. The weariness that filled his whole body spread a refreshing warmth over it. Letting this weariness emanate from his body, Kenneth vaguely saw plain-clothed police officers walking briskly towards the Hansen. Kenneth's words bothered Hathaway. It seemed there was a mafty army in Own Belly, and Kimberly himself was heading there to clean things up. These two bits of information were not something Hathaway had imagined. What is this? Ah, uh, your name? As Hathaway exited the walkway, several airport personnel, policemen, and officers of the base were waiting for him. It's Hathaway Noah. Oh, okay. Please wait in the VIP room. It's this way. A female employee with a body like a coiled spring stood out in front of Hathaway. From her appearance, there was no doubt she was from this island. Thanks. The lobby was fortified by gun-wielding soldiers, and the civilian passengers were completely closed off. The room on the other side of the thick mahogany door they were guided to was a wide space that was almost too gaudy in the way it was decorated. One side was a giant glass window that faced the runway. A space the size of a gymnasium was lined with vermilion sofas and rosewood tables spaced wide enough so that you couldn't hear the conversations passing over. Where would the chief of the criminal police organization be? The question was from a middle-aged man in front of Hathaway. He was wearing glasses and accompanied by two subordinates. It seemed he was talking to his fellow companions in the room. Who are you? I am with the Federation Bureau of Investigation. I want to set up a meeting to question the chief. The chief is, uh, yes, he's over there. I appreciate it. The trio's clothes rippled like water as they ran between the relaxing ministers. Watching this men unfit for the room move around, Hathaway walked towards the window as if drawn in by the sunlight. Well, the hero arrives. Hathaway Noah, I'd like to shake your hand. I heard you were a soldier when you were younger. It was a pity that Hiram Messier died, but afterwards, when we were taken hostage, the Earth Federation government launched a huge assault. It wasn't just about my own life. I am grateful. Having relaxed after being saved, 
the wives bubbled with conversation. One of them, old enough to be Hathaway's grandmother, embraced him and gave him a kiss. No, I just did what was right for any person. Repeating such cliched phrases, he finally managed to sit down on a window-side sofa. Just as he was thinking Gigi should be around, a companion dressed in a white blouse and a long black skirt that almost touched the floor came to take drink orders. Her head bowed in an oriental style. Oh, I'll have a ginger ale. Right away. Just as she went, the chief of the criminal police organization came accompanied by the trio from the Bureau of Investigation. I believe haven't introduced myself because we weren't on the same ship, Hathaway Noah. I remember, your father was Bright Noah of the Space Force's 13th Autonomous Corps and captain of the Ra Kylum. During Char's rebellion, you piloted one of the military's mobile suit, right? Not at all. I just stole one. I got out of it without being convicted because we won the war. No, no, it was quite the feat. I am Hundley Yoxum of the criminal police organization. I'll need you to accompany me to the investigation room for an interview, but we've been having a bit of a dispute with the Kimberly forces. I want you to stay in Davao until tomorrow. Is that possible? No problem. I'm going back to Minado, so I'll wait for my flight here. Minado? In Sulawesi? The question came from a man behind the chief wearing classes. Yes, I'm currently training as a biological observer on the Minahasa Peninsula. Really, that professor? Amata Manson? Yes. Okay, prepare a hotel room for him. The Kimberly forces say they're going to stay here, but who cares? Find a different hotel. Of course. Our hotel should be prepared by the airline company. This and that are separate things. But for questioning, now is okay, too. We're done for today. Dismissed, dismissed. Your ladies are waiting for dinner overlooking the southern ocean setting sun. You don't know their troubles, do you? The chief patted Hathaway's shoulder and returned cheerfully to their seats. The companion who was waiting came and brought Hathaway's drink. Before Hathaway could take even a moment's respite, the glasses-wearing man from the Bureau of Investigation returned, business card in hand. Director Geis H. Hugist? I have a favor to ask. I want you keep this incident a secret from the general public, all right? The way he talked was a bit irritating. He clearly didn't have anyone above him to report to. Of course, Director. And also the chief said that, but could you just tell me a little about the situation? Us higher-ups can't be so laid back. If you would, please. The glasses-wearing man stood up before even hearing Hathaway's reply. His behavior stunk of someone who didn't think of ordinary humans as humans at all. Slightly disgusted at the bureaucrat, Hathaway drank his ginger ale without the straw. Why didn't they realize, though, Hathaway? The reason sat on a sofa across from the Hathaway's glass. It was Gigi.